the nick of time. In the nick of time. That's what I just said. No, I meant... Oh, never mind. That human was actually, really, going to kill me. Evil times, dear king. It's astounding that someone will want to destroy life. I love carol singers. And poor Midas, deranged. We have to somehow get the rest of his mind back from the editor and seller. I wonder if one day that, you say that, you will. We must inform the Space Patrol of the evil things those two have done. The Space Patrol are your law enforcers, correct? Yeah. Come on, let's find the flight deck and the communicator. I've got raw chicken skin in my bladder. Come on, Midas. Let's try this way. Well, you finally proved your real worth, Scylla. Think I'd let you have access to a weapon that could kill? That thing you're holding isn't a gun, it's a device, which I use when creating one of my many fabulous disguises. All you've done by firing that machine at me is alter my vocal cords, so that I sound like our beloved father, Nermal Hammond. However, I must thank you for your assistance in prematurely creating my next disguise. All I need now is a makeover, then I will be Nermal Hammond. This however, is a weapon that kills. Bespoke for the actuality of your termination. Yes, tower, tremble, fetid witch. For you cannot evade the next act. I bid you an agonizing excursion to hell, Scylla, as I conclude this partnership of sibling rivalry in a dramatic denouement. Farewell! Whinging scum. <laughs> Computer! Line. Print up the latest thesaurus. I'm running out of adjectives. Go oh, and see if you can rustle up some beetroot on a stick. Tanitas! Tanitas! Where are you? I bought you the ancient scrolls of Ankalor, the sacred text of our people's history. Ternidus? He's gone, and so's the drinks machine. I bet the space patrol are behind all of this. Right, I shall get back to my laboratory and lay a complaint at their insufferable behavior. Ladies, gentlemen, and hermaphrodites, this is your pilot speaking. This shuttle will soon be approaching Retsarp Heklian, after which we will be stopping at Medic World before travelling to our final destination of Tsurial 3. Soon be with you, my hug bunny. Very soon. Well, I can't get to Tsurial 3 quick enough. Still, luckily, this flight isn't busy at all. Just me and some bit of rough smothered in tattoos. So, lots of room to stretch out, relax, and dream of my hammy. Excuse me, Treagle. Yes? Do you know where the bogs are? Down there, through doorway C. Oh, well, cheers, love. I hate space flights. I think we did it's just about to make a comeback. Oh, charming. Now to have a look at the papers. <laughs> Part three of our Midas Midasen retrospective. Oh, poor Midas. Quite literally, very soon. <laughs> the flight deck should be somewhere on this top level. Maybe we should split up. What if there's more of the editor's gang on board? More reprobates like that Scylla creature. There could be. Well, they're here. Look. What is it, my dear king? I was trying to keep hold of Midas. He seems to think he could walk on the ceiling. My name's Leslie, and I'm a dragonfly from Kent. But his meanderings have led to what I believe is a flight deck. Oh, right. Come on, it's Yeah, let's hope so. Well, shiver my timbers. The flight deck. I'll locate the communicator. And see if you can find my collection of roast pheasant muck. Hmm. Yes, well, uh... Oh, don't worry, Midas. We'll help you out. If we ever catch up with the editor. Oh, no! Heavens to Betsy! What's the matter, Mr. Bob? The communicator system? It's been smashed to pieces. What? So now we're isolated here. Can things get any worse? I once mated a Filipino with a clavicord. 
Yes, they can. <laughs> there. With the protruding nasal hair in place, my disguise is complete. Now, tailored as my long-lost father, I can begin the next phase of constructing my dominion. Root out the evil tendrils that threaten to strangle my utopia. My universe! Already five strands have been erased, and how I savored the process of their elimination! <laughs> now, to inspect the remains of my base and those four misfits to ensure nothing survives. Oxygenator on! These weren't really designed for permed hair. Here I come again, Voltarabia! <laughs> Colonel Franklin, if you do not return King Terridus, you will be violating our societal structure. And I can't imagine that that would be good publicity for the Space Patrol. I can assure you, Mentor Gulgolin, that the Space Patrol has nothing to do with the abduction of your king. Our diplomacies do not involve kidnap. Return him now, or I shall get onto your press immediately. How can we return what we don't have? You stupid host! You've not heard the last of this! Oh dear, I shouldn't have said that. What the catastrophic flip-flop is this? A human! Bugger it! I misset the coordinates. Very queer. We are now leaving the transmat range of Retsarp Heclion. Our next stop is Medic World. We would like to welcome all new passengers aboard and hope that you enjoy a pleasant journey. Our in-flight magazine this week shows the latest pictures from the Earth system outer planets. So sit back and enjoy the probe into Uranus. Hello. May I sit here? Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry. I'm just a bit of a nervous traveller. Oh, I see. Silly, really, considering it's part of my job. What, being nervous? No, travelling. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> So, where are you heading for? Oh, Medic World. Strange place. Because it's a working planet, there's no proper settlements or cultural development. Sounds horrible. Oh, it is. Very. Are you from Earth? Yes, on my way to Serial 3. Ah, business? In a sweet coating of pleasure. Do you mind if I get out Mr. Pubis? Sorry? He's my friend. We're inseparable. <laughs> Would you like to meet him? Um... I'm not, I'm not really sure. Oh, you'll like him. Won't she like you? Yes, she will! He's in my leatherette bag. Hold on. Mm. Oh, why me? No, I'll never get out of this claustrophobic casing. Just stay calm, Mr. Bob. I promise to help you, and I will. We just need to get our priorities right. Oh! Are you all right, Cindy? You look very tired. I'm fine. Probably just that narrow escape catching up with me. Or the sight of my dazzling heliotrope neckerchief, perhaps. If only it were. Igloos make lovely hairnets. I feel a bit sick, actually. It's the tainted thoughts of recent misdemeanors. Look! It's that bloody circus in town again. Midas? I suppose you'll be off doing favours for the clowns. Does this mean anything to either of you? No, just ignore him. Trapeze whore! Quiet, Midas! So, what the hell? Well, as the communicator's broken, we'll have to fly to the nearest space patrol outpost. I'll check where that is on the star charts. I suppose you'll be wanting to return home now, Ternidus? Yes, I suppose I should. Gulgulid will be terribly worried about me. We'll transmit you back down in a moment. Were you aware that a rather large beekeeper from Newport Pagnell has just force-fed me a javelin? And how long can Midas survive like this? How do you mean? Look at the state of him. I doubt he can feed himself. What happens when other bodily functions need to happen? Oh. Right. Our nearest hope is Finkelburn 5. It's about two days from here. Then let's get going. One problem, Mr. Bob. I can't fly this thing. Neither can I. 
That leaves Midas and Turnidus. I once dated seven Mr. Men at the same time. No, that leaves Turnidus. Here we are, Mr. Pubis, my baby. Hello there. A two-foot marionette dressed up as a clown. Shh, don't say that. He can hear you. Oh, what have I done to deserve this? <laughs> There's not many people on board, are there? Small passenger numbers is often the case with these shuttle flights. Yes, only five of us. Five? Don't forget, Mr. Pubis. Um, I'm just gonna go and get myself a... Don't go! Don't go! Not just yet. What's your name, my blossoming dandelion? Um, uh, Maureen might... Maureen Blades. Ah, my name's Teddy. <laughs> my friends call me... Teddy, yes, that's right. So, uh, what were you doing on Ripsab Haklian? Teeth. Teeth? Teeth. <laughs> oh, I see, you're a dentist. A travelling dentist, my dear. An official space dentist. <laughs> I'm so sorry, and to have arrived so rudely. I am a mere student of the outer worlds, and hitched to lift to see your beautiful environment. Oh, not an earth student. They always seem to look pale and blotchy, and expel undigested poisonous beverages onto the flooring. Yes. Well, I am a mature student. What are those? Would you mind not fingering my scrolls? They look very old. They contain the wisdom of Ranulf. What on earth is Ranulf? 
He's not on Earth. Uh, Ranulf was the greatest Volterabian. The richness of our cultural heritage is owed to his philosophies. And what are the screws? Well, they elucidate his teachings. They must be worth a king's ransom. Worth what? Uh, may I see? Uh, only the mentor and king of this world may peruse the parchment, so please desist. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Gungadin. Gungadin. Anyway, so, what did you want to see, Earthling? I was journeying to see the falling dust of Anchor Law, and to have a little look at those new Earth settlements. I, I believe a friend of mine may be there. Hmm. <laughs> Why does that woman over there keep staring at me? Oh, never mind her, Maureen. I've had an awful day. Really? Hmm, I'm just going to get a drink. No, wait, wait, wait. Have you ever seen a red Saab Hecklian? Can't say I have. Eight foot frogs with 68 teeth. Fascinating. Cold hearted creatures, Maureen. No humour, no character. Do you know the type I mean? More than you realise. Uh, well, this particular one, Charlican, moaning continuously about this one filling playing him up, <laughs> insisting I took it out, even though the monitor showed no decay, no trouble. Oh, is this story long? I'm getting bored. <laughs> anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. So eventually, after much nagging, I took out the tooth and, hey, presto, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> no, go on, guess. Oh, uh, well, uh, he was okay? <gasps> My, you are clever. Isn't she, Mr. Pubis? She is, Daddy, but not as clever as you. Oh, flatterer. And such a pretty little girl. Has anyone ever told you what a pretty little girl you are, Marie? Yes. Mm. Sad little individuals with no life in the main. Excuse me, I need a drink. Don't worry. We'll be right here. You can't get rid of us that easily. One bucket of bleach and an act of force feeding and I would. <laughs> oh, yes. Funny creatures. Happy as Larry, when I'd removed the tooth. He even took me to the spaceport to make sure I got this flight to Medic World. <laughs> Funny lot, aren't they, Mr. Pubis? <laughs> yes, Daddy. And Daddy's a clever, clever man. And what a set of molars! Oh, you. You'd swoon the gibbons out the trees. You can fly the ship? Of course. But how? I mean, your people don't indulge in space travel. This technology is child's play. But would you be willing to pilot us to Finkelburn 5? Well, I should transmit back to Volterabia. My people need me. Of course. Where is Ralph? Quiet, Midas. So what are we going to do? Well, look, it can't be that difficult. Can you go through the basics and I'll have a go at flying this damn thing? Well, of course. It's the least I can do after the terrible deeds that have been done to you. Well, thank you. Bob, you keep an eye on Midas. Okay. Yeah, look. Me what Let's hope Cindy can learn how to fly this crate. To make this recipe, you'll need two tins of emulsion paint, a cup of iron filings, 42 elk lungs, a dash of 16 ABBA LPs. This is going to be fun. Will you marry me, Phoebe? I can sing Tiger Feet. <sighs> Oh, stop it, Mr. Pubis, you tinker. Don't be long, Maureen. Oh, how am I going to get rid of him? Hello there. Hi. The drinks are free on this flight, aren't they? Yes, all complimentary. I see you've made friends over there. Oh, don't. Why is it always me who ends up attracting the mad ones? It's typical, isn't it? A long flight to Medic World trapped next to the most boring old fart since my late husband. I only said he could sit next to me for a bit of stimulating conversation. Except I end up with a patronising moronic imbecile who can only form a meaningful relationship with a puppet. Pathetic people with pathetic lives, I'm afraid. That's my husband. Oh... Excuse me! I must warn you before you journey to Angkor and the Earth Settlements. One of them exploded a short time ago. Really? Oh, I do hope it wasn't my friend. I'll have to dash down there now. D did they find any bodies? Nothing. Completely atomized. Good heavens. We Volterabians are taking an approach of non-intervention. I understand that policy. I can, however, show you my extensive wardrobe or any other amazing sight of our glorious planet. I'll give that a miss. What the? 
Someone's arriving by LRT. By what? Long Range Transmat. Oh, more surprise visitors. There's only one group that owns an LRT. Who? The Space Patrol. <gasps> Looks a mercy, an invasion. Greetings. I am from the Earth Space Patrol. Invaders! Pillagers! Kidnappers! Does that make sense? Yeah, it's just the technicalities. How come you understand it? I didn't see any signs of technology on your planet. Ooh, we've gone beyond the need for technology. Life is so much simpler without it. So how come you're technically competent? It doesn't make sense. Oh, oh. Sidney, are you all right? I feel a bit dizzy. Well, can I help in any way? Or should I remove these dealy boppers? No, I'll be fine. Anyway, back to the ship. I'm okay on coordinate setting and drive units. I'm not quite clear on st on stopping the ship. Stopping the ship. I Oh. Cindy? Cindy? East about quickly. What's going on? She just collapsed. She went all faint and fell over. Is this part of your human life cycle? No, she's ill. Oh my, this isn't too good either. All clammy and cold. But we don't have what you call ill on Valtoravia. I can't even examine her properly. Being entombed in this blasted drinks machine. Have you heard that Ina Sharples? Accusing me of wearing a negligee! Not now, Midas! What shall we do, Easter Bub? I once crossed the River Thames in a blonde merkin. All ships have to have a medic bay by law, so I suggest we take the pair of them there immediately and see if we can diagnose what's wrong. If all of Banana Rama fitted inside my tank top, would that make me a threat to national security? Oh! Midas has collapsed too! Well, I don't like to say this, but thank goodness. Do you mind staying and helping me for a bit? Oh, not at all, Easter Bob. I was only going to hand rinse my 52 robes this evening, followed by a receptacle massage. Thank you, my dear King. You stay there. I'll go and find the medic bay. Well, I never. At this rate, I'll have to buy two diaries. Maureen, are you coming back over? For God's sake. We miss you, Maureen. Is he giving you bother, love? No more than any other man. If he is, you just come and get me. Why would I want to come and get you? Yeah, fill these. No thanks. Cast iron. <sighs> I can break any bone, any number of times. Can you take a hint? Of course. Good. Piss off. I'm stuck with three morons. You want to see my tattoos? I'd rather eat sick. And what are you playing at? What, dear? Ignoring me. Shutting up an infinitely younger and more beautiful woman. But it wasn't me, Frank. It was Mr. Pubers. Ah, no, stop it. He's a bad influence on me. Oh, shut up about that bloody puppy. <gasps> Don't you call him that! Why what? did I ever marry you? Well. Oh, oh, what do you want to do with anything? No, 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 one more word out of any of you, and you'll have me to answer to, and I don't need to break bones to make a point. All right? Ah! Ah! What was that? A bloody big explosion! Mr. Pubis held me tight! We've been hit. No, we'd have felt the jolt. Listen, the engines have stopped. Maybe it was them that blew up. <laughs> what are we gonna do? We could be stranded, adrift, in the vacuum of forever next <laughs> Would you mind staying calm? Get off Valtarabia now, whoever you are! I am Colonel Franklin of the Space Patrol. Colonel Franklin, I thought so. Yes? Who are you? Uh, a mere student visiting this world. I don't care if you're a resurrection of Squanible the Fluck Knob. You can just leave! I, Galgalin, demand it! Galgalin? We meet at last. Why don't you leave us alone? I am here for two reasons alone, Galgalin. What reasons? To ask for one final time, face to face, if the Space Patrol can have a non-interventive base here. Well, you already know my answer to that. And secondly, to look at the remains of that Earth dwelling that was atomized a short while ago. How did you hear about that? One of the other settlers reported the explosion. 
Honestly, this part of the galaxy seems to be a disaster area at the moment. Charming! Well, what's that supposed to mean? I mean those competition winners who were on a trip here. Their ship was obliterated by a meteoroid storm. But, but we don't have meteor belts out here. Yeah. Why don't I take Colonel Franklin to those Earth settlements while you calm yourself, Dulgolin? Oh, very well. But upon your return, Colonel, I would like to conclude all this embassy business once and for all. Very well. Follow me, Colonel. And after you, beauty before you. How does that student know where the Earth settlements are? And where has Turnitus got to? Ooh, troubled times! Where is she? Get me an outside line to Cinderella. again. I've been trying you for three weeks and I'm really worried. I explained on my other messages that it wasn't me who wanted you to give up your night job. It was from above. And I really don't want you to quit here from the Institute. We've always worked so well together. Please call me as soon as you can. Why doesn't she answer? I can't have pissed her off that much. Get me an outside line to mail her SW719G. This mailer is currently unavailable. Please try later. Oh, I don't believe it's still unavailable. There's only one place left to look. Get me the number for Madame Depole's house of ill repute. Any luck, Mr. Bob? I've found the medic bay. Oh, well done. It's on the lower level of the ship. How shall we get Cindy and Midas down there? We can transmat directly there from this flight deck. Wonderful! Was the equipment functioning okay? Uh, from what I could tell, yes. Uh, but it's going to take a while to wire them up. Right. Let's get down there. It's a good job the emergency lighting came on, even though it's very eerie and red. Don't worry, Swagel. The pilot sorted it all out in no time. Why hasn't he told us what's going on? We've been stuck here for ages. He's probably too busy getting the injuries back online. Oh, you're very clever. What's your name? Padroli Jadra. I'm Frag. I don't want to be here anymore. And I wouldn't be here at all if you got yourself a qualified nurse to assist you. You work with him. Unfortunately. Oh, my silver disc is jammed onto my head. Good. Oh, Maureen, lovely kind Maureen, come back and join us, please. Yeah, what are you doing, girl? I'm trying to listen to what's going on. And don't call me girl. Well, it's all very quiet. What shall we do? The four of us should stay together and go and see what the pilot has to say. Come on. Good idea. Come on, Maureen. Come on, please. This way, Colonel. Who are you, exactly? I'm a freelance journalist explorer and a great fan of the Space Patrol. I'm sure I recognize you from somewhere. Oh, I doubt that. I think I must have one of those faces. What exactly are you doing on Volterabia? Drinking in a new species, Colonel. Metaphorically, I hope. Of course. Down this way. So, these competition winners, they all die? Yes, sadly. I must remember to ask Golgolin for the hard copies from his investigator, Bratop, the one who found the remains. So, the Space Patrol aren't going to investigate? No, no. The Volterabian report was very thorough. I know. How thorough they can be. The media world was quite shocked to hear of Midas Midasson's demise. I'm sure. Only recently married, too. That young girl from his show. I bet she's heartbroken. Well, apparently she's on her way here to visit the site of his death. What? She, she's left Earth? Yes. Why are you so concerned? Oh, uh, a young girl like that out here by herself. No more dangerous than a middle-aged man out here by himself. Here they are, the Earth dwellings. 
Good grief! What a sight! This is deplorable! They've ruined the landscape! There's no way I'm going to allow them to stay here. First things first, let's go and see the site of that explosion. Come on, Galileo. Have the courage. Right. Hello? I'm uh, looking for a young woman. Well, you've come to the right place. We have the cracking range of stunners. No, I, I don't think you quite understand. I'm not like that. Aha, uh -huh, I get you to live, you kinky dinky. You want lady boy? No, I do not. Oh. Well, I guess then a fully-fledged man is your object of desire tonight. Shh! Can you keep your voice down? People in the street can hear. Don't be worrying. We are all above board here, sir. All lady boys checked for full working parts. I am not here for one of your ladybirds or whatever they are. We don't do animals or under 18s. We are highly respectable. Will you shut up and let me in? Thank you. What am I letting myself in for? Right, here we are. Here we are. This door leads to the pilot's cabin. I can't hear anything. Try knocking. No answer. Maybe he's been knocked out. Ooh, hug me tight, Mr. Pubis. Daddy, Daddy, I need to wait. Can you shut the photon up? What now? Oh, stand back, and I shoulder the door down. Will you turn down the testosterone a minute and try the door switch? Ooh, there's no light in there. I'm scared of the dark, Daddy. Ow! <laughs> Just shut up. Let's go and find the lights. Oh, dear. Got it. Oh, it's not working. What's that? Sounds like the electrics. Why is the emergency lightning not working in here? Everyone crouch down and carefully try and find the pilot. He must be unconscious somewhere in the cabin. <gasps> oh, shit! The emergency lighting's gone out. I can't see anything. The blackness. It's suffocating my eyes. We need a talk. Did you bring one? No. <gasps> Hold on, you, the dentist. You must have a light source in your equipment. Daddy's so scared to move. This is serious. Daddy wants to go home. Give me that puppet. No! You killed Mr. Pubis. Oh, blimey. Stuck with them all. <laughs> Who shut the door? It's shut by itself. Well, open it. Uh, I'm trying. It, 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 it's shame. Keep trying. Over here. What is it? Liquid, like oily water on the floor. What's your name? Frag. Frag, I'm coming over to oh. you. This way, over here, in the corner. The door's completely jammed. Poor oh, Mr. Pubis, mashed like a potato. Are you going to help you, Frag? I dare. Oh, Jadra, just forget him. Try and get that door open. Frag, where's the liquid? Down here. And guide my hand. Oh. Right. Oh, what is it? It's blood. Teddy, what is it? There's someone down here, in the dark, lying next to me. It must be the pilot. Stay still, he could be badly injured. I want my kennel! Oh, shut up. I'm coming over. Any luck with the door, Jadra? No! All the electrics are down. But that means the life support could be down too. What the hell are we going to do? I've pooed myself. Just stop making things worse. Be more now where's the body? Oh, yeah, down here, to my left. An ID badge. <coughs> he must be the pilot. Oh. I'm going to check the rest of him. <coughs> oh, Maureen, why are you so quiet? Have evil imps turned you to stone? He's gone stiff. I'm not surprised if you're frisking him in his sleep. He's not asleep, Frag. He's dead. <laughs> Come in, come in. My name is Madame Dupont. Beautiful. What a stunning entrance you have. I like to keep myself in shape. I meant the room. Oh, oh yes. Uh, we have a plush array of antique furniture to give a feel of class and style. Now look at that old sailor's trunk. 
must be worth hundreds of credits. Yes, my lovely chest is always the focal point of visitors' eyes. May I run my hand over it? Can't you see the sign? Ace of Basted. Visitors are reminded not to finger the chattels. I'll bear that one in mind. Anyhow, Mr... Uh, Gamak. Galileo Gamak. What are you desiring? Well, I've come here to look for Cindy. What? I said I've come here to look for Cindy! I heard what you said. I take it you haven't heard the news. I, I know. She's vanished. She left work three weeks ago and I've not been able to contact her since. No, 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 no. It was on the news mere minutes ago. What was? She's dead. Well, not a lot left to search. The whole dwelling has been atomized. Indeed. So you won't investigate further? Officially, we can't. This planet isn't affiliated to the Space Patrol. Whoever comes here does so at their own risk. Such a shame. I, I mean, the Space Patrol does such good work. Well, it's Volterabia's prerogative not to work with us. Right. I'm going to return to Earth and declare this place off-limits. That's unusual. Well, there's only here, Lendavia and Zulian Major that have never affiliated, so not a bad rejection rate. I suppose not. And I suggest you get off this planet. There's obviously some danger here, and I would suggest you don't expose yourself. Pardon? To the danger. Oh, <laughs> yes, of course. I'm going back to Golgolin. Farewell. Gadzooks, it couldn't be better. They believe my fake report that Midas and Cindy were killed in an accident and won't investigate the obliteration of the base. With those two and Istabub gone, so disappears dangerous threads to my past. And now, the very person I planned to occupy. The ladder to my stronghold is here before my eyes, ripe for the picking, prey to my will. <laughs> And I really must stop doing these asides. Anyone listening would think I'm mad. Run that past me again? She was in orbit of Voltarabia when the ship was destroyed by meteoroids. But what was she doing out there? She'd won a stellar network radio competition there, didn't you know? No. I mean, last I saw her, she'd quit her job. I'm sorry, I thought you'd know. I can't believe it. She came in here three weeks ago, all excited. Left me without security for a while, but no problem, I thought. I can deal with the rough and unruly. I don't doubt it. And then I hear the news on Stellar Network Radio. She's definitely dead. I'm so sorry. Poor Galileo. Please come through to my office and have a stiff one. Oh, I'm really not in the mood. I meant to drink. Oh, right, sorry. Yes, no, that would be good. <coughs> now what? Try not to panic. <coughs> oh, Teddy, be quiet. First Mr. Pumas, then the pilot, and now me. Is he always like this? Oh, it's okay if I take him for a walk. But I left my collar on Rats Arpeglion. How much air can be left in here? Well, there's plenty of air. It's just not being recycled because the pumps aren't working. Maybe if I say my prayers, we will be saved. Well, if you can't contribute anything useful, then shut up. Yes, Marie. You're using up valuable oxygen. <coughs> Chadra? Bloody door. No good. I can't see a thing, and that don't help. Oh, let me help. Oh, be careful, Frag. We can't afford to have any more deaths or injuries. Where are you? Ah, oh, what pecs you have. Uh, when you've quite finished, uh, you two keep trying to keep the door open. This room's getting really stuffy. I'm going to feel around for some kind of emergency signalling device. Signalling SOS? Yes, I'm going to feel around the console area. Nice one. Come on, Frag. Let's try and get this open again. Right. Morning. Uh, 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 what? Uh, they're not going to need a coffin. We're already in one! Oh, darling, rest your short head upon my breast. Mmm, ah. primroses. That's my all-in-one cleavage and clunky freshener. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, oh, ample, I must say. So what are you going to do, my dearest doctor? Oh, please, call me Gamak, Madam D. Well, Gamak. There's something not quite right here. I know. It's the skirting board. I'm afraid I hired a painter with an allergy to the smell of rubber. 
Every time I came in in my favorite outfit, he was off like a Jack Russell in a broth of black pepper. I've never seen such shoddy handiwork. Except when we had a visit from that politician. My poor assistant was chuffed for weeks. I was referring to the situation with Cindy. Oh, my dearest brothel security. What will I do without her? There'll be others. That's true. But don't you find the manner of her death odd? I find men who like to get spanked over a clavichord while dressed up as Nana Mascuri odd. Ah, uh, well, I have a peculiar feeling, Madam D. Darling, you should pay a visit to our resident toy distributor. He's an expert in peculiar feelings. This is serious. So is two foot of hosing at the top of Utterly Butterly. But you're right, Kamak. What are we to do? Cindy is no more. I don't think she is. Are you experiencing paranormal interference? I don't know about that, but I've a gut feeling that Cindy isn't dead. Oh. <sighs> Jadra. Can we cut through the door? What with? Well, there must be a sharp object we can scrape away at it with. Uh, I suppose it's worth a try. Let's hunt around. Okay. Uh, Maureen, here. if I divorce Frag now, will you marry me? I'd rather stick pins in my eyes. I'll take that as a no, shall I? Yep, you can take it to your deathbed. I wouldn't touch you with a stiff pork top. Ooh, have you found an SOS? No. Because I can't see what any of the switches are. Oh, what, shall I put my headlamp on? You what? You had a torch on your headgear all this time. I was suffering from shock. And shut up and switch it on. <gasps> you did have a torch. No chew sticks for you if we ever get out of here. Uh, what relationship you two have, Frank? Oh, it started off okay, Jadra. I should never have agreed to using the choke chain. How long have you been married? Six months. He seemed sane when I first came to work for him. I got it! An SOS! Yes! <laughs> it's working! How come? I thought the electrics were all knackered. He must be power from a separate source. That would make sense in the case of power failure. <gasps> but now what should we do? All we can do is wait, like Terry wait. In the meantime, let's try and get out of this cabin. Oh, it's no use! We'll die here! <laughs> Are you going to help me, Madame Depole? Oh, why not? If I stay here, I'd only have to sort out the invoices. And I'm buggered if I can be bothered to work out the cost of having 48 nipple clamps serviced. Good, I think. Right, let's go. Where to? There's only one institution that can help us now. Not the little Coxford Amateur Dramatic Society. No. Thank heavens for that. I hate the lead singer. He once tried to touch me in an horrendous place. Well... Thurrock. I had to avoid my two up, two down for weeks. I didn't know you had a house. I don't. So what are we waiting for? For you to stop prattling about little Coxford. Let me grab my shawl and a pair of bifocals and I'll be right behind you. And I bet you haven't said that to a man in my position before. <laughs> Darling, I do special rates for Tories. Right, I'm all ready. Follow me. It's about time Colonel Franklin gave me some answers. <laughs> Have I wired them up correctly? Yes. I'm now getting their diagnosis report on the computer screen. The poor humans. They look very quiet and shiny. The machine will take 20 minutes to produce a diagnosis report. I suppose we should be grateful the medic bay was functioning properly. So, what shall we do for 20 minutes? It's a shame you don't have any hands, Mr. Bub. You could pluck my armpit hair. Have I said something wrong? It's not an activity I've heard of before. Uh, I suggest we search these lower levels while we wait. What's that? It's strange. The machine is saying that while Cindy is in a deep coma, uh, Marnus is having full-on dreams about his past. But I thought the editor removed his mind. It seems he didn't suck out the area that deals with dreams. Well, let's go and explore. Okay. I do wonder what Midas is dreaming about. You're watching the Galactivision channel sponsored by Stellar Network. And now it's time for that ever so famous game show, Get Out That Gutter, starring Midas Midason. <laughs> Well, well.
welcome to another edition of Get Out That Gutter, the game show where we take deprived and underprivileged people out of their sad little lives and spruce them up in posh clothes for a day. Woo! And remember, our contestants are, quite frankly, scum. Scum, scum, scum. Oh, have some compassion for them. Remember, it's gloat at the garbage time. Reconnoiter with the rubbish, as our contestants have the opportunity to win ten a thousand credits to help them start a new life in our trash or cash finale jamboree tombola! Let's our two contestants. We have uh, Harley from Harridge and uh, Maureen from... Is this Cock Foster's? No, madam, it's mine. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> a nice round of applause for our guests there. Yay! So, let's start with the young lady of the show. Maureen Blades. Hello, my dear. So, tell us for 50 points exactly why you are in the gutter. Where is she? In that gutter! Well, Midas, I was orphaned at the age of 12 and never had the education I needed to get a proper job. Oh, you're going to have to do better than that, Maureen. Come on, dig deeper. There must be some real dirt in your life, some filth in your family, some rot you'd forgot. You've got to make the audience squirm. Remember, this is for your 50-point starter. OK. My father was an East End criminal who was shot to death by his partner in crime, and my mother supplied handguns to underage teenagers with drug problems. That's it! You've got the 50 points! You're getting out that gutter! What's she doing? Getting out that gutter! Well done, my dust love. That was a good show. Not bad, Hal. Not bad. But when are they going to get that holographic projector back? It's such a pain having to actually be here for the show. It should be back next Monday. You think as producer, I'd have some clout to in requisition. Listen, where did you get that young girl from? Maureen? Oh, my nephew just started in the radio department recommended her. Splendid contestant, tell him. Hmm. Well, I'm off. Good night. Good night. Oh, if looks could love. Uh, Midas? Hello, Maureen. I thought you'd been whisked off in the limousine to a champagne dinner with a hunky model of your choice. No. So, what are you doing back here? The studios will be locking up in ten minutes. You know, uh, when I had to make the choice of which hunky model to choose, I didn't want any of them. Oh, I see. <laughs> You don't like muscles. I prefer a slender, taller, maturer model to accompany me. Oh, I... Oh. 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 Maureen, I don't think your hand should be in there. Why not? I can feel you want me. It's... It's just I always carry a cold saveloy in that pocket in case I get a bit hungry during recording. Oh. Would you like to... I've never done this before. Forty years in showbiz and I've been as clean as a whistle. But your eyes, they're like, uh, eyes. And those lines around yours, each one a small tendril of lust, reaching out to tease a feather-like trace along my nubile, nymph-like form. <laughs> Maureen, you're naked! In Studio 4! Take me, Midas. Where? I mean, ravish me. Use my body in whatever way pleases you. Oh, my lord, I... I need a drink. Look, put your frock on. Why don't we slip back to my villa? It's a mere block away. Yes, your villa. Yes! What's wrong, Midas? I'm sorry, Maureen. I can't seem to do it. Oh, don't worry. There's plenty of time for us to try again. You see, it's been so long since I performed. I think I must be a bit rusty. Just seeing you there in front of me is enough, holding it strongly between your legs. I feel such a failure. Oh, you're not. I made unreasonable demands of you, expecting you to please me like you were a young man again. I promise I'll practice it on my own, in private. I've just forgotten all the fingering techniques. And when the G-string snapped, I felt such a fool. Oh, please don't fret. The more you try, the more you'll get it wrong. Maybe, maybe I can play with it? You? Yes. Here, let me have a hold. That's it, Maureen. Grip it well. Make sure your arm is straight. I remember trying this when I was at school with the music teacher. Did you perform together? Mm, during the lunchtime. It was my fantasy, my escape from the hell that was my life. Oh, Midas, let me do it again now. 
Let me do my damnedest with your instrument. Oh, Maureen, it's what I've always wanted. A girl who would have a go of it for herself and I could just sit back and watch. Here, look. It's between my legs, nestling in. Oh, Maureen. Are you ready? Do it, do it. Now on Galactivision, here is the 20 hundred hours news with Jake Avara. And our top story tonight, game show host Midas Midason, 65, to wed contestant 23 from his show. Good evening. Tonight my pants are sponsored by Curvaceous Kex. And our main headline, renowned game show host Midas Midason has just announced that he is to marry his girlfriend Maureen Blades in the next few days. Maureen, of no fixed abode, although the phrase gutter comes to mind, first met Midas on his game show of Get Out of the Gutter. I spoke to the happy, if not unlikely, couple before the show. Congratulations! So when's the big day? January the 1st, New Year's Day, and a new life of happiness. Yeah. Maureen, can I ask? He's 65! Why? Because he's caring, compassionate, and the most wonderful cook. Uh, can I just clarify there, Maureen? You said cook? Uh, yes. What will you be wearing for the wedding? Crimson hot pants and a racy shawl. I see. And Midas, the patter of tiny feet? No, there'll be no dance performance from me at this wedding. Because, of course, at your fourth wedding ten years ago, again to a much younger model, and which again only lasted a year, you did perform river dance with a holographic image of Neris Hughes. Indeed. Well, at this wedding, Maureen and I will be performing a virtually live rendition of our first single together. We're very excited. Well, thank you, Midas and Maureen. And I believe we're now going to have a look at that video single, Storm Inside My Head. that float on by without a key Like a thousand islands always longing for the sea Like a leaf in autumn as it severs from the tree So I long for you And I will always be there There's a storm inside my head that I know soon will break The emotions I feel inside I know I could never fail I feel for you Inside my head that I know soon will break The 
the emotions I feel inside I know I could never fake Cause I feel for you Cause I feel for you Push ahead, my dear, and see what's on the studio canteen menu. I just want to have a word with Jake. OK, Crumplekins. <laughs> Did you have to make that dig in front of Maureen? Well, I think you're a bloody fool, Midas. Five wives! I just hadn't met the right girl. You've been through enough. You may be my brother, Jake, but I can still give you a damn good thrashing. I'm 34, and Mr. Muscle in Lycra Champion 2133, as well as being a successful newsreader on Galactovision, so I wouldn't try it. Then you look stupid reading the news in tight, spangly pants. Oh, you're just jealous of my massive ratings. You may have bulging figures, Jakey Wakey. But you only got the job because I opened the door into Tinseltown. Oh, you're such a sourpuss. And you've always been jealous of my enormous... Taco van or vegetarian pizza? Pizza? I'm going to have a deep pan, nine but inch. You'll be lucky. What was that? Nothing. You should try and get on. I haven't got any siblings. You're very lucky to have two brothers, Midas. If you can call Kyle a brother. More like a family pet. I've not met him yet. Oh, you will. Come along, Maureen. Let's go and eat. By the way, Jake. Your ass wobbles. At least I have one. Made from steroid. Better than half your bones being made out of plastic. Uh, yeah. So, you're finally going to leave our world alone. There's nothing more I can say to convince you. My stance is very firm, Colonel. Hello again. Now, oh, back again, student. Not for long. Please give the Space Patrol offer some serious thought, and contact me if you ever need our services. It is most worthwhile, Gulgolin. Oh, not you on the hard sell, too. I would always highly recommend the Space Patrol. Its diplomatic corps has sold many a dispute before the eruption of war. Watch my lips. All four of them. N-O! Very well. And I shall be seeing that the Earth settlements are removed from here forthwith. Farewell, Gulgolin. <laughs> This is Colonel Franklin to Earth Space Patrol HQ, requesting immediate induction of LRT transmatter link from Volterabia back to Earth. Colonel Franklin, uh, wait! Uh, may, may I hit your lift back with you? Certainly not. That will be most improper. Wearing French knickers and a blonde wig to a job interview is improper. I'm sorry, but no. It's just... I now feel terribly insecure here, knowing that I don't have the protection of the Space Patrol. You should have considered that before coming here. I suppose it's not within your power to authorize such a request. No problem. I'll try and get help from higher ranking. I'm very sorry to trouble you. I am the highest ranking, and of course I can authorize it. Marvellous, thank you. What? Let go. Move back. How dare you? At last! Peace and tranquility. Well, once I found Turnidus, no doubt he has his trunk bedded in some earth salesman's undergarments. <laughs> He'll buy anything, that boy. Right, Turnidus! Turnidus! Turni! I thought it worked perfectly. I meant you had no right to jump Transmat with me. I should have you arrested. I'm sure you don't want me to have to cry on the shoulder of my high-up journalist chums about how insecure the outer rim of the galaxy is because the Space Patrol failed in its affiliation. Every rim has a danger. But all those deaths on Volterabia, Colonel, not good for business. I do know you, but I can't quite remember. It was from several years ago. Who are you? It, it, it's quite impossible for you to know me. I don't come from Earth. Well, whoever you are, you have to leave here immediately. No unauthorized personnel are allowed in this building. I'll call security to escort you out. You're too kind. Um, may I borrow your bathroom while I wait? Oh, yes, but be quick. It's down that corridor first right. 
I wish I could remember where I know him from. Security? This is Colonel Franklin, requesting escort of one male at LRT reception from the building. Immediately! What if no one hears the SOS? We die. I wonder if I'll come back as a doggy woggy. Oh, you're warped. You should be banned from working in the medical profession. Frank, how did you meet that nutter? I answered his ad in a personal column. And when he said he liked to dress up as a German shepherd for fun, I imagined leather lederhosen and a wooden crook. I don't think I want to hear the rest. It wasn't until three months later, after a whirlwind romance, leading to a wedding in the Church of Our Lady of Immaculate Work Surfaces that all was revealed. Go on. It was the first night of our life together in my caravanette in Bridport. The lights were dimmed, the music was soft. I slipped into a split-sided negligee and lay seductively on the airbed, sheets draped carefully over my varicose veins. When it happened... What happened? He bounded in, fully dressed up as an Alsatian. Oh, my God! Oh, the tears I wept that night. The bonios he got through. Oh, what was that? Something's hit the ship. Meteors! We're going to be bludgeoned by space debris! Maureen? Shh! Listen! I can't hear nothing. Exactly. If it were meteors, we'd hear more of them hitting the hull. <laughs> If it's not meteors, what is it? Something's docked with us. <gasps> so near, the object of my desire, the key to my power stands mere meters away, and I have just seconds to secure its capture. Think, Adam, think. I'll have to get her to Sulian Major. I can't let this wild stroke of luck pass by. That, as well as revealing the unprecedented actions of my paramour. I'll lock myself into this turret cubicle. That should give me more time. Now, to assure my kingdom's erection and come through the glory wholeheartedly. Space Patrol HQ? What are we doing here? Well, as I said, there's only one institution that can help us with Cindy. The poor dear girl. Her death has still not sunk in. And I guess you must find it unusual for things not to sink in easily. <laughs> <laughs> so, how can the Space Patrol help? Well, I want to find out exactly why. They were being very difficult about my suggestion of promoting her to senior researcher. Oh, such a brain that girl had. And a lovely pair of good sumpers. Yes, well, you wait here. I'm going to probe deep at the highest level. That's what that vet said. I couldn't ride it back for weeks. Well, I'll be back in a few minutes. You take your time. I'll just spread myself out here in reception and finger through a woman's realm. Okay, but don't leave a mess. It's a magazine. Oh, right, okay. I'll be back in a tick. Don't worry. Now let's see. How to keep your waterworks clear. Oh, an article on plumbing. Prevent your Volvo getting scratched. Could be interesting. Ah, oh, an article on cars. I wonder how long Galileo Gamak will be. Colonel Franklin? Security here. Yeah. I can't locate really that guest you wanted escorting out, sir. No, he's in the bathroom. And the reception asked me to tell you that Dr. Gamak's here to see you. Oh. Send him up via Transmat. Yes, sir. What does he want? Doesn't seem to be much on this level at all. Just the shovel bedrooms. There's something very queer about this ship. How do you mean? Just a feeling I have. It looks almost abandoned in a hurry. Ah, yes. This used to happen a lot, I believe, on Earth, in something called the Bermuda Shorts. Triangle. That's it. Galgalim was telling me of Earth phenomena, and the mysteriously abandoned Marie Osmond. I think you mean Marie Celeste. That's the one. 
Ah, yes, it, it, it's the Marie Osmond Foundation, which apparently endorses these knee-length stripy socks I'm wearing. Look, saints preserve us. They go splendidly with the bobbles I've used on my armpit hair. Scary thoughts, my dear king. Mm hmm. Well, shall we look inside another of these rooms before we head back to Midas and Cindy? Why not? <sighs> what is that? So why have you come to me about Miss Rella's death? A gut feeling. There's more to her disappearance than meets the eye. You've been working too long in that institute, Gamak. I hardly have any choice in the matter. Oh, yes, you do. <sighs> Why is it that whenever I talk to you, I feel threatened? Guilt, perhaps, Doctor? Try and remember exactly why you were there, and the circumstances that led to your hasty appointment. Oh, you still expect me to be grateful, don't you? But that's what you get off on, isn't it? People beholding to you. How dare you! Well, it's the only reason I'd ever have said those things to Cindy. Take a step back in your words, Gamak. Cindy had to go. Had to. Her lifestyle was not conducive. Oh, funny, isn't it? But beneath that austere, brash approach, there lies a frightened person. Me? Frightened? Of someone making it on their terms, on their own merits and hard work. Of someone not frightened of being an individual. She's a scrubber! Oh, yes. It all comes out now, Colonel. With just a little pinprick of truth, your venom spits. What truth? The woman was an embarrassment. Well, funny how every other woman who is just about to rise to a rank below you, just close enough to possibly reach up onto that powerful little perch of yours, suddenly quits or is moved sideways. Get out. Why don't you just admit it? I said get out, Gamak. You're nothing more than a jumped-up jealous officer whose mother happened to know the right people. You're fired. Oh, go on. Attack the way you always do, through your rank, because you have no other power. And you're out of a job. <laughs> you know you can't get rid of me. I've broken my back to keep you in the space patrol. I even forged your qualifications. And this is how you repay me. You're as pathetic as that scum you came here to defend. Well, that just goes to prove my earlier point. You're a deceitful, manipulative coward. And you're a two-bit thief who got a little bit too greedy and was too stupid to get away with it. Now get out and get back to your job. Or shall we choose which prison cell you want now? You have just made a very big mistake. I said get out! Get me the complete file on Galileo Gamak. At once. Hello, Dr. Gamak. Sir, are you all right? I've just had a bit of a run-in with our Colonel, I'm afraid. Bit of a temp I'm led to believe, sir. Well, she's gone too far this time. Uh, excuse me, I need to get into the bathroom. I'm afraid it's occupied, sir. I'm just waiting to escort the guest who's in there out of the building. Oh, it's OK. I, I just want to wash my face. Sir, would you mind asking him if he's OK, sir? Oh, what's the matter? I've been waiting for nearly ten minutes. It might seem more appropriate coming from you. Oh, yes, of course. Right. Have a second. Hello. Yes? Uh, the security guard outside was asking if you were okay. I'm fine. It's, uh, it's just he's waiting to escort you out of the building. I was just coming out now. <laughs> oh, that's better. I'm sorry about that. I wasn't trying to be... You? Hell's teeth! Galileo Gannick. Aaron told me you were dead. Did he? Yes. Just before your scum of a son stitched me up. Do you realize what he did to me has left me trapped for years? Oh, Gamak, you really shouldn't be bitter after all this time. Wait a minute. That scar. Aaron's father never had a scar there. <laughs> still stupid, still gullible. Still a puppet. First officer. Isn't it? For some sick reason, dressed up as your missing father, but it is you! Aaron! Aaron, it's so 
SOS answered. That was quick. Yes, it was. Too quick. Well, maybe it come from many World. All this so clear. It's only been active 20 minutes. I've got a rum feeling about all this. Are we going to be abused by space pirates? But why would pirates bother raiding this ship? Was anyone carrying anything valuable? We'll, we'll just be builders' work here and a couple of multi drills. Well, maybe they steal dentist equipment. Shh! Listen! Oh, what was that? Aliens. Oh, my God. Well, what the hell is going on? <laughs> it's getting closer. It sounds hideous. Saints protect us. And me, especially St. Bernard. Fred, Jagger, come here. Come away from the door. Quick, right. okay, okay. We're clear together. They're going to kill us. It's trying to get in. Oh, Jagger, I'm scared. Quiet. Get the He's trying to smash his way in! Keep back! Look out! Ah! 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 Ah!